my name is Villette Tenova uh, and I am doing my research with Newcastle University. It is my pleasure to present to you an authorised view leveraging all of your expertise and heritage. And this book was done in conjunction with Macambri University. I would also like to thank my co-authors, uh, whom you can see listed uh, on this slide. So in our work, we align uh, with design research, which calls for better engagement with heritage theory. But we also draw on established uh, design methods uh, for working with uh, uh, communities. In the paper, we present four themes which contribute insights to uh, insights on working uh, with volunteers. And in fact, we propose the term genius loci uh, as better suited uh, in capturing the volunteers' uh, relationship to heritage. We believe genius loci can broaden our perspectives uh, in terms of design uh, in heritage. And we are proponents for longer and meaningful engagement with the participating communities. So in heritage theory, um, a couple of main points are the idea of authorized heritage discourse, uh, which has been introduced uh, in the heritage field in 2006 and has been widely discussed since then. Um, it is about, it governs the decisions made about heritage sites, uh, what is considered heritage, what stories are told, uh, what is uh, uh, being worth preserving and what's not, and actually who makes those decisions, you know? Uh, and what, and then what um, values and uh, what the grand stories are created uh, as a consequence. This uh, ties uh, with the spirit of place to an extent, uh, which has been a concept uh, widely used in design uh, in relation to heritage. Uh, and it is kind of in summary what the place is all about. So the tangible and intangible uh, elements that uh, give it its specific character. And since these topics have been widely discussed, the new um, heritage theory that's emerged uh, is called critical heritage theory. That's the umbrella term. And uh, specifically, we're interested in the ideas of plural heritages um, presented by uh, Scofield et al. And it just reminds us that heritage uh, is plural precisely because it evokes different associations and covers different meanings, uses and values for different groups. And then design and heritage are both underpinned uh, by uh, social dimension. So there is already a lot of established work uh, in the field in, in HCI. We build on that uh, and we do respond to the calls for more work with volunteers. We find most pertinent to our research, uh, the work done by Klaes et al. and Scofield et al. And we do inform a lot of our uh, methodology by already existing uh, approaches from uh, uh, HCI design. So in terms of that methodology, uh, we worked uh, in partnership with the National Trust uh, at Citadel Hall. Citadel Hall is an 19th century Baroque country house in the northeast of England, which is a quite a curious um, history uh, with a, a fire uh, and it makes it an interesting place uh, for design and uh, interpretation. So we worked with both staff and volunteers uh, over 18 months towards designing uh, a digital uh, installation uh, for interpretation to be exhibited in, in situ uh, on site. So our uh, approaches can be roughly split uh, in two categories. On the one hand, we drew inspiration from ethnography, so there, we did observations, I volunteered at the property, and we carried out uh, focus groups. Uh, and we also incorporated uh, some probes uh, in getting uh, better engagement uh, with uh, our participants. We followed this with uh, four co-design workshops where we gave our participants um, more educational technologies to play and experiment with and see what they come up with and like starting uh, to be more comfortable with uh, the use of technology. And then once some um, ideas and preferences emerge from that, we uh, held four more technology workshops where we tried to open uh, the technology that they were interested in um, to, uh, to, to them to make it more understandable. Um, they began to be interested in virtual reality uh, and how that can be used uh, in, a, in a heritage site to tell stories. 
So the uh, four themes uh, we found, we begin with uh, interpreting spirit of place. So that was, uh, participants thought about it very fondly because they did think about the comedy and the drama that is uh, associated with the Sitten del Rojo, and they found that quite interesting to their own experiences of the site. Uh, we did get some comments that, uh, you know, uh, spirit of place can be criticized, uh, but it largely remained unchallenged because um, our participants would always revert back to the grand stories uh, that uh, they could tell visitors uh, about the, the family who owned uh, the house. However, they were always really eager in sharing their personal history uh, with the site, uh, but only in, in the closed spaces uh, between themselves and uh, working with us. But they did share a lot of uh, their childhood memories. Uh, they shared their own experiences of uh, discovering the site and found the commonalities. Um, one of the participants was uh, also linking her own uh, heritage uh, back to uh, the, uh, the aristocratic family, saying that uh, it is in her blood to be there. Um, but they did not feel these were stories that were to be shared with, uh, with visitors. So when we work with uh, the technology in the beginning, um, they, um, they thought about creating installations that fit uh, the space. Um, they thought about the physical space and how the visitors would move through and um, kind of creating this um, infrastructure, which then to populate with uh, uh, the big stories. Uh, and in that uh, way, they didn't start from the story point, but they started from the technology. Um, and we just wanted to think about how we can work with them to uh, support uh, them in, in telling their own stories. Uh, we did so by working with them towards unbounded uh, content creation. Um, in that, uh, when we were already focusing on the idea of virtual reality and how they can um, be more hands-on with it, uh, we used the 360 camera and at that point they started um, challenging their notions uh, which they had expressed, they had the sentiments that computers and VR is something for their younger family that is usually designed for uh, younger people uh, in mind and they didn't always feel comfortable with it. So by letting them use the 360 camera and seeing the process of how a 360 video goes into VR, they really started thinking, you know, appropriating that technology. They started thinking, well, what can we, what they could film? What were the specific areas and um, of the site that uh, visitors may not see or that are important to them or that relate to their stories? So um, it just really came to life that they wanted to capture their own content and, and create their own collection rather than using the existing collections uh, of, of the site. So with that, um, there's two uh, points uh, for our discussion. The first one is Genius Loci. Uh, so Genius Loci is actually a literal translation of Spirit of Place and it has a Roman origin. But by reverting to this Roman origin, it is not what spirit of place, as I defined it earlier, um, means. So we define genius loci as the people who have a close connection to a site. You know, they, by the means of presenting the memory and by personalizing the experience, they guard the site. So in that sense, they become the spirit of place made manifest. We're looking beyond historical authenticity when you're forming design and we start grounding it in uh, personal experiences. We also believe that adopting genius loci uh, will help us to contribute to this notion of uh, plural heritages. And to wrap it up in this way, to be able to support this, um, working with heritage communities, having hands-on approach uh, with the technology really helped. Like it really means a lot to trust them to pick up the technology and use it in their own terms, to start thinking through the technology. 
uh, and to do so, we need to work with the already established routines they have, such as the idea of one team, so not uh, directly splitting uh, between volunteers and, and staff. They are already one team inside this particular property. And that also helped us starting addressing normative uh, authorized narratives. You know, they, when, when the participants engaged with the technology in their own terms, they made content that was particularly nuanced uh, when they were thinking about fitting into, filling into time, knowledge of the site, and placing it in different seasons and periods, uh, not even historical periods, but periods of their own life. Um, so this was a lot more refreshing in, in the sense that it, they gave them new confidence and moved away from this established um, form of interpretation. So in conclusion, uh, the four uh, points we wanted to make is that we need to recognize volunteers and other communities around heritage sites as, ex as experts of their own experience. And by adopting Genius Loci, uh, we help champion their own interpretations, which are not always institutionally authorized. And when we start building designs facilitated by long-term engagement, uh, we are working to letting participants really capture their own content and uh, begin understanding the technology uh, better. And we also hope that we'll be able to support divergent voices in the spaces and create designs that better fit with participants on practice and interests. And with the uh, COVID-19, uh, our VR installation uh, has been indefinitely postponed, um, but we made a lot of the materials available online uh, on the website um, at the bottom of the slide. Uh, and we've also shifted, the, uh, shifted part of the focus on creating this collection uh, of, uh, from documenting the site and also some of the stories uh, that were going to be uh, available uh, in the installation in situ. So once again, uh, I want to thank, uh, to thank my partners uh, at the National Trust and also my co-authors and thank you for listening to this presentation.